In the previous film, Ray had told Frank that generous living was more than writing checks. This time, we see a type of generosity that goes beyond simply throwing money at a problem. The construction company is not only being hired to fix up the soup kitchen, but it's hiring many of its workers from the people who eat there. This is what happens when we begin to make the transition from viewing the poor as a group to viewing them as individuals. This act of generosity didn't just fix the roof, it employed individuals. Of course, no discussion of sowing seed would be complete without our text for today. Do not be deceived, God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please their flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the spirit from the spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we will not give up. That speaks of a simple spiritual reality. You reap what you sow. Ray being a gardener, and spending his day quite literally sowing seeds understands this well. While giving our good sheep, as it said in a previous episode, as, as, while giving our good sheep to God reflects our love for him, sowing seed reflects our understanding that we are called by God to be fruitful for his kingdom. We sow by serving others and by being led by God to invest our time our gifts, and our resources as he sees fit. As Christ's followers, we sow our time, gifts, and resources as well as sowing the gospel, scattering the seed, watering and harvesting it in the hearts of our neighbors. By the end of the film, we see that Frank has gotten this idea inside of himself. Our lives are meant to be as stewards who are sowing seeds. God invests in us. God's love, in a way, flows through us. Sometimes we see that. We see that uh, when we come to meals together, when we are gathered for vacation Bible school, when we gather in worship and fellowship together, when we hear reports of our involvement in faraway places like Camp for Mission. But sometimes we don't see the result of the seeds we sow, and there are many stories that we don't know. Um, Back in the 1870s, um, a little church in our conference, the Ravenna United Methodist Church, gave a few hundred dollars to establish a girls' school in Korea. A few years ago, uh, the choir of Iwa University, which was a massive choir, came to our annual conference to sing by way of saying thank you. That little gift of several hundred dollars back in the 1870s is now Iwa University, which is the largest women's university in the world. The largest women's university in the world. Now, many of the people who gave that gift in 1870 never lived to see the fruit of those seeds that they sowed. And in the same way, there are many stories that we will not know of how the so seeds that we sow make a difference in the world. We simply have to trust that God uses our gifts in ways that we will never know. It's as if God's love flows through us. We receive blessings, we share them, and God uses our sharing. Throughout today's film, Frank is trying to get a hold of Alan, his financial advisor, and I'm sure you as I believed at first that he was concerned about the stock market decline that we saw on the newscast, but that wasn't his concern at all. He was feeling an urgency inside himself to begin to respond to this urge to give. We need to have that same kind of urgency in our life. Many of us are impulsive buyers, but I think we need to be impulsive givers as well. In 2 Corinthians, Paul says, we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. We need to ask ourselves, are we interested in being urgent with things that are temporary or with things that are eternal? 
It's a simple question, but an incredibly important one. We spend so much of our time and money on things that are temporary. Paul, in the other part of the Corinthian correspondence, 1 Corinthians 9, talks about this. He says, everyone who competes in the games does it to receive a perishable wreath, but we compete to receive an imperishable wreath. Paul was calling the church in Corinth and the church today to turn our gaze to eternal things. Frank and Ray also have something to say about that. Prayerful, risk-taking stewardship will result in a beautiful harvest that will be revealed in God's good time. A younger contemporary of John Wesley, a man named Matthew Henry, wrote a commentary on scripture. And in that commentary, he says, our present time is seed time. Put simply, our earthly lives are time to sow seeds for God's work. Now we've concluded our video journey with Frank, but his journey isn't over. In fact, you might say it has just begun, and so it is with us. But we've learned some keys, I hope, about what it means to live generously. But we've got to apply them as we walk together on this journey. Our takeaway this week is to ask ourselves the question, have we been putting off something that God wants from us? Now is the time. It is seed time. In the parable of talents in Matthew chapter 25, um, we are asked essentially to be stewards for God. And the question that each of the servants has to answer when the master returns is this. What did you do with what I gave you? What did you do with what I gave you? It is now seed time. In John chapter 15, we read, My Father is glorified in this, that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. May we sow in such a way that we give glory to God. And may we go forth living lives of generosity with the newfound humility of Frank and with the joy that we saw in Ray. Amen.